can't believe it. We all know Australia has kangaroos. We all know China has pandas. We all know the lions of Africa. But what about those animals that go under the radar? What about those animals that you wouldn't associate with that place? Animals so rare, only a handful of people see them. You may not know they are here, but they live among us. My name is Cookie, and this is Animal Anomalies Abroad, the duckbill platypus. The duckbill platypus is a world famous animal for being one of the weirdest animals on the planet. Made even more famous thanks to this little guy, Perry. Platypus are known as monotremes. There are only two different monotremes in the world, the echidna being the other. They are about 50 centimeters long and can weigh up to two kilograms. They are known mainly to be nocturnal, but also they can be crepuscular too. This is a mammal because it produces milk, but it also lays eggs, which for mammals is mental. It's got a face like an otter that's been crammed into a shoe. It's a carnival, but doesn't have any teeth. The males of the species are venomous and can cause excruciating pain. If you shine an ultraviolet light on them, they turn blue and oh yeah, they're really cute as well and that's just a few things to show you how weird of an animal this is the platypus is endemic to australia however so you aren't finding these in the wild anywhere else on the planet they tend to live alone in burrows on the side of riverbanks or creeks or ponds and they only really ever come out to find a mate or feed like most animals alive today though they are in a bit of a decline and are recognized as being a near threatened species with serious danger to some populations becoming locally extinct their population has been estimated to have decreased 30 percent in the last 20 years but a Official numbers are speculative at best, with other estimates suggesting that 30,000 to 300,000 platypus were alive in 2016. What we do know though is that even with potentially 300,000 platypus knocking about, they're incredibly hard to see. They're extremely shy and elusive and very sensitive to sound and if anything gets them a bit nervous, they will disappear underwater. It also doesn't help matters when they're mostly nocturnal and most people in Australia will go their entire lives with never seeing one in the wild. And as far as I'm concerned, I like the sound of that challenge but i'm also a bit nervous that this could be the first episode where i don't find the creature we are at birdsland reserve to hopefully see a platypus now i feel like platypus are going to be sort of like otters in terms of how elusive they are and how hard they're going to be to find but fingers crossed this search could last us the whole of Australia and we might not even see it so I'm not gonna get hopeful for tonight but uh, you never know let's uh, see if this lives up to its name let's go it's a cheeky little swamp hen no, I think personally our best bet for a platypus is in something like this, a small creek like that. The problem with something like this though, this lake, is it's big and platypus are small. And platypus, when they, they're in water, they sort of look like a log, except for they obviously they've got limbs, so they've got the two front and the two back. That's what you're looking out for, but it's difficult, man. Scanning the lake to see if I can see anything out in the distance because it's quite a way away. There's something right out there, but I can't I can't tell if it's a uh if it's a platypus or not. It unfortunately was not a platypus. So we've sat down to try and uh, just sort of scope out this area and straight off over into that distance there where like the trees in the water, something came off the bank and dived in. We didn't see it though, we just heard a splash and then that was it, it was gone and it was just ripples on the water. So that could have been one. Um, we haven't actually seen an animal pop up from that ripple. Like if it was a bird or a duck or whatever, do you know what I mean? Like waterfowl, it would have come up. Nothing did. And unfortunately, as the light faded quite fast, we didn't get any platypus action. But we did get to see a swamp hen tell another swamp hen off. So that was good. As expected though, trying to find platypus was going to be quite difficult due to them only being out in the light at dawn or dusk. That's okay though because now we're heading up the coast to enjoy Australia before continuing our platypus search. What a wicked 
wicked animal. A mammal that lays eggs <laughs> and is venomous. So strange. Honestly, if we can see these in the wild, mate, it's a dream come true. It'll be absolutely unreal. Oh my God, I'm in love. I am in love. So this was a great opportunity to be able to see a platypus doing its thing in captivity. This was at Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary in Brisbane, and it gave us an idea of how difficult it was going to be to see them. This platypus spent a lot of its time under the water, coming up to breathe every now and then like this. It seems fortunately for us though, this platypus also developed an itch while we were watching, so we got to witness this cute scratching. In the wild though, we're most likely never going to see anything like this. Our best opportunity is to catch a glimpse when they come up for a breath. So after we left Lone Pine, we hung out in Brisbane for a bit, checking out some of the local nightlife. While doing this, we saw quite the array of species like tawny frog mouths, possums, koalas, spiders, cane toads, and powerful owls. There is a full video on this, so if that interests you, definitely check it out. But eventually, we were going to head to our next location to try and spot a platypus. This was up a little further towards the Sunshine Coast. There's nothing Sunshine Coast about this, is there? So it's just going, what, half four or something like that? We're gonna head over to this location, um, which we've been told is a good place, like a good chance that we could see some platypus. Um, so we're gonna head over there now. We're gonna take the camper van and we're gonna see if we can find a platypus on this river. So fingers crossed, let's go. Oh, mate, believe it or not, I've got a jumper on because it is actually, it's actually cold here on the Sunshine Coast. Where's the sunshine? Okay, here we go. This is the creek we are looking in. Try and find some platypus. And I'm not going to lie, I thought that was one straight away and I nearly wet myself. But this is where we're looking. In this. All the way that way and all the way that way. So we've got ourselves about an hour of light left. Um, that's all we've got really. And I'm hopeful ish uh it's just it's a platypus it's like trying to find otters in the uk it's really difficult and you don't really get a long time of being able to see them but as soon as we started walking about and looking around it's like the earth sensed the english had arrived so it greeted us in an english fashion this is english weather i didn't come here for this jesus no platypus so far it's unlikely as well rain's picking up and I don't think it's going to be. I'll have, uh, I've made myself some friends anyway, while I'm here waiting for a platypus to show up. So these are Australian brush turkeys. They also go by the name of bush or scrub turkeys. They're a common sight in Australia and you'll see them in most places. They're a decent size too for a bird, coming in at a total length of about 75 centimetres and having a wingspan of about 80 to 90 centimetres. They can be quite brave around humans as well. They show little fear and will actually be courageous enough to try and steal food if you have it. I had no food on me though for these guys, so they left me a Alone to wait on my own to see a platypus. Ah, oh, right then, I'm gonna have to call this off because this is no good. The weather's just getting worse and worse, so it's not gone in my favour. Um, I haven't seen a platypus. Brush turkeys, then. All right, attempt two failed. Um, we'll go again. Hopefully, the weather's better. That's a problem. Oh God, okay, so we've made a long, long drive up here to try and get to the other side of here because this is supposedly one of the best places in Australia to see platypus, like the best chances anyway. And as we get here, the road to it is flooded. I sort of want to give it a go going through, but at the same time, if the van gets caught, we're in big trouble, you know? Um, this isn't like a game anymore in terms of like animals and stuff. Crocodiles live in these things. We're up near Cairns. This is crocodile territory. Like some of the crocodiles that Steve Irwin put in his zoo are from creeks like this up in this area. There's a creek about two kilometers back that way where one of his crocodiles is very uh, famous little scenario. Um, it's called Murray the crocodile. It's where Steve Irwin had Robert Irwin under his arm and fed the crocodile. Very controversial. It's very famous. That crocodile though came from that creek up there. Um, so I'm very well aware that in these creeks there could be some crocs just chilling, uh, waiting for a bite to eat. This is where we are, that's the river that's flooded. That's where we want to be to camp, and around here 
should be platypus knocking about. Um, I don't think we can get through, unfortunately. It just looks a bit wavy in the middle. Again, very aware, there might be crocodiles in there, so. I don't know, I think that's pushing it if we tried that. My biggest fear, right, is if the water goes above that and it just pushes the whole van. Uh, we need a vehicle like that to get through that. But we've got that. So after the long deliberation of should we cross this fast flowing river or not, we decided against it and went off in search of another stretch of the river we could get to. That involved heading up a very steep mountain in first and second gear of the van. Once at the top though, we found somewhere that looked quite promising. Now, in terms of trying to find platypus, this is really not a good time. We're here at midday, so it's half 12. And platypus times are usually early morning or late evening because generally they're a nocturnal animal. But that doesn't mean you can't see them here at this time. Weird things have happened. I've seen otters, which are supposedly the same, middle of the day, slap bang in the middle of the day in the UK. So it's unlikely, but we could see them here. Now in this part of the world, there have been mad floods and lots of rain to uh, contend with, which makes the river a very very dirty colour and quite fast flowing and quite ferocious. Platypus will be in this but it makes the job very difficult for us to try and find them. So looking out to all of this is where we might find a platypus. It's going to be difficult. So we waited for a while and did see this turtle chilling out, but we sort of knew that it probably wasn't going to happen for us at this time. We started to walk along back the river to the van and then Oh my god. Oh my god, it's a platypus. Oh, oh it's gone. Oh. <laughs> it's the middle of the day, it's like one o'clock. You see the platypus? <laughs> okay, I need the big lens. It's That's ridiculous. No, he's gone. Oh my god. I can't believe it. <laughs> We've just seen a platypus. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. This is incredible. I can't believe we're seeing this right now in the middle of the day. Oh, this is just unreal. Like, oh, I can't put this into words. This is amazing. This is a wild platform. <laughs> this is absolutely, this is wicked. Genuinely one of the best things I've ever seen, wild platypus. I'd really not got my hopes up for finding these in the wild based on them being nocturnal and for how shy and elusive they are. So to see them slap bang in the middle of the day was extremely lucky and a dream come true. We stayed in this spot watching on for a few hours and it just kept getting better and better. We didn't have just one platypus show, there were three in total on just this stretch of the river. It was utterly mesmerizing. But not only were there platypus to enjoy though, there were plenty cockatoos a couple of turtles, this little black cormorant and kookaburras, both kinds in fact. This is a tick off my wild animal bucket list and I couldn't be happier. So thank you all for watching, this has been Wildlife with Cookie, Animal Anomalies Abroad, the Australia edition, the Duckbill Platypus. Don't forget to like and subscribe, take care. As big as my hand, that is incredible. Oh my God. He's like three meters away from me. I'm nervous.